It's time for Nicole Sandler's What's News from NicoleSandler.com and the Progressive Voices Network. We cannot perfectly predict the day, but we have now been saying for some time that we are in the window and an invasion could begin, a major military action could begin by Russia in Ukraine any day now. President Biden's National Security Advisor Jake Sullivan warning on Sunday that a Russian invasion of Ukraine was imminent and that Russian troops were in place to attack before the end of the Winter Olympics in Beijing on February 20th. On Saturday, Biden spoke with Russian President Putin and told him that Russia would face, quote, swift and severe costs if it invades. On Sunday, Biden told Ukrainian President Vladimir Zelensky that the U.S. and its allies would respond decisively to any Russian aggression. The U.S., which ordered the evacuation of most of its embassy staff from Kyiv, says Russia has more than 100,000 troops near Ukraine's border. The threat of a Russian invasion has been looming for weeks now, and the consequences could stretch globally. Closer to home, crisis not quite averted, but slightly diverted. The Ambassador Bridge, North America's busiest land border crossing, has finally reopened after nearly a week-long blockade by the so-called Freedom Convoy, you know, the truckers protesting Canada's COVID-19 vaccination mandates. The bridge connects Detroit and Windsor, Ontario, and is essential to the movement of goods between the U.S. and Canada. Police began arresting protesters involved on Friday after a judge ordered them to leave. But, yeah, some groups of demonstrators are still creating gridlock and choking businesses in other areas of the capital city of Ottawa. And it's spreading to other parts of the world, with protesters blocking traffic in Paris over the weekend and in New Zealand... Police attempted to clear the protesters out by playing Barry Manilow hits and the Macarena. This is surprising. Rudy Giuliani has reportedly been engaging with the House Select Committee investigating the January 6th insurrection, and the committee expects him to fully cooperate with its subpoena. The former guy's one-time lawyer was one of four witnesses scheduled to appear before the committee last week, but those depositions were rescheduled raising concerns that he'll back out somehow. But his lawyer has reportedly signaled to the committee that he is willing to cooperate. In case you hadn't noticed, the 2022 Winter Olympics are in full swing in Beijing. Like any Olympiad, this one is not without controversy. And this one is actually a doozy. Despite Russia being suspended from the Games thanks to those pesky doping charges, they're still participating, but Instead of, as Russia, there are the Russian Olympic Committee? Seriously? Well, now comes the decision from the Court of Arbitration for Sport. They ruled that the Russian teenage skating phenom, Kamila Vileva, would be permitted to continue skating at these games, citing her age, 15 years old, and status as a protected athlete. She failed a drug test in December, something that wasn't known until after these games had already begun, thanks to seeming incompetence from the lab. But the decision to let her continue skating drew massive condemnation from most in the global sports community. Ultimately, they decided that if she wins, there will be no medal ceremony. So that means that the U.S. or any other country who might win a medal as well is robbed of that experience. Why is Russia in these games again? Well, on Monday morning, the three men convicted of murdering Ahmed Arbery, that jogger in Georgia, are back in a federal court this time where arguments begin in the civil rights trial against them. Of the three high-profile killings of black people in 2020, there was George Floyd, Breonna Taylor, and Arbery. This trial is the first to directly accuse those responsible of being motivated by race. This week begins as South Florida marks the fourth anniversary of that horrific shooting when 17 people were killed and another 17 severely injured at Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School in Parkland. And the ultimate fate of the murderer has not yet been decided. He did plead guilty to the murder charges in October, but his sentencing proceedings have continued to get delayed. They're now scheduled to start in April. That'll determine whether the murderer gets the death penalty or serves the rest of his life in prison. And it's all over but the bragging and the parade, I guess. 
The Los Angeles Rams are the Super Bowl champions, beating the Cincinnati Bengals 23-20 at the brand new SoFi Stadium in Inglewood, California. The halftime show got a lot of props, featuring hip-hop legends Dr. Dre, Snoop Dogg, Kendrick Lamar, Eminem, and Mary J. Blige. Eminem took a knee in the middle of the performance after reports that the NFL would not allow him to do so. But Warren Gunnels, Bernie Sanders' budget committee staff director, left us with this thought. Can't stop thinking about how the owner of the Rams, worth $12.5 billion, was able to receive a $100 million tax break to build a $5 billion stadium named after a student loan company, while 45 million Americans owe $1.8 trillion in student debt and 600000 are homeless. Welcome to America. And that's just a bit of what's news for now. I'm Nicole Sandler. If you appreciate these reports and the Nicole Sandler Show, I hope you'll consider making a contribution. My work is fully listener supported and I can't do it without your help. Find out more at NicoleSandler.com and please click on that donate button.